G'day guys, it is Drew here from Metal Roos with another interview here and I am joined today by Jared Smith, the bassist from the Absolute Technical Death Masters Arch Spire. Jared, mate, how are you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? I am fantastic. It's a nice early morning here in Sydney. Uh, what time is it there in Canada at the moment? Uh, 2.40 okay. in the afternoon on, I think it's Thursday. <laughs> yeah, cool. Oh no, it's Wednesday. Then that, it's, yeah, uh, okay, it's Wednesday. Yeah. I'm like... Oh, yeah, that, that can't be right. Yeah. <laughs> that can't be right. All right. So kicking off into it, uh, you guys are coming October 11th for the Tech Tech Australia to a, a Tech Trek, I should say, Australia tour, yeah. uh, kicking off October 11th. Uh, I believe this is the second time you guys have been to Australia? Yeah. 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 First time was four, four years 20, ago, maybe? 2019, yeah, I believe. Yeah, it sounds um, right. Yeah. Did you get a chance to do any of the sort of touristy stuff when you were here, you know, like seeing a kangaroo, uh, holding a koala or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, we did all that stuff. We went to the yeah. the sanctuary in Brisbane. Yeah. Um, it was it was awesome. I mean, I think that's kind of like the biggest part for anybody. You yeah, know, watching like those... some of my friends go down to Australia and play the shows. I'm like, well, the shows look really cool, but they also got to hold a koala. And if I don't get to do that, like, I don't know about this tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like those bucket list items that you have to tick. Like even yeah. the Australian has to do it at one point in their life. It's like a rite of passage. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty cool like uh, sanctuary that they got. All, like, I mean, the, the birds are are crazy. Even just like walking around the the town and seeing like uh, the is it an ibex the the bin chickens the bin chickens yep yeah uh, I've never seen it I've never seen anything like that in my life. <laughs> now, what sort of things excite you the most about touring countries that you don't tour often, like Australia? God, good question. It's I don't know. Sometimes you get like a whole lot of nothing. There's just, there's just, you know, your day is filled, but you're not doing anything. And so it can yep. be pretty, pretty boring, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you get your an hour or 45 minutes on stage and it's like the, the best part of your day. If we, if you have a day off, we had a, we had a day off on our tour in our recent tour in Europe, mm -hmm. um, back in, uh, March. And I think we were in Barcelona and it was, we were just spent the day at the beach and it was like the most legendary day off. Like the bus just unloaded us at like nine in the morning and we had the whole day to just kind of party and, you know, just do crazy shit all day. Yeah. <laughs> and by the end of that, I was like, man, that was like the, the probably the best day any of us have ever had on tour. It's always good but to it's like, when you get those days. Yeah, yeah, but it's like such a rare, it's such a rare thing because usually you're just like, hurry up and get there and load into the venue and you kind of just in the same same cycle every every mm. day or the same schedule every day of just loading in, setting up, sound checking, ah, time for dinner, ah, doors are open, so we got to work. Um, so you, you don't necessarily get to do a whole lot of touristy stuff, it feels like. Talk to me about the Bleed the Future video, because this was touted, you guys did a Kickstarter for it, uh, raised, yeah. I think, over 80,000 Canadian for it, which was mm -hmm. well above your target. And yeah. I believe the tagline you guys used is you wanted to make the craziest death metal video ever. Yeah. Talk me through that. Um, so Ollie had this idea about, um, you know, I guess, I guess to start his, his, his brother and his girlfriend or fiance now, um, they, uh, they both work in film and make, um, practical effects and like build creatures and monsters and dead bodies and all this stuff. And so we worked with them for the drone corpse av aviator yep. video where like our, our heads exploded and my face melted and all that stuff. And, uh, I, th I think that was a hugely successful video and we just wanted to do that again, but more extreme. And so we had this idea or Ollie had this idea for this monster and what we could do with it and this and that. And we worked on it for, it was a huge project and we were working on it for like a year. And then, you know, when we looked at it and saw how much it was going to cost to do this and hire the stunt team and like, it's just like a rent the, rent the club and all this stuff. It was a, it was a hugely expensive, <laughs> hugely expensive project. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, the, what they built and the creature they made and the effects and the, the digital stuff and the blending of the, of the, the practical and the digital effects, I think like turned out incredible. Mm. I, uh, it was a really, really fun experience. Like we had like a hundred and something Jesus. Uh, extras That's a lot. sort of sign up. And then we had a stunt team who were incredible flying across the club and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So it was like a really fun few days filming that and i think the final final product uh looks awesome and i, I think it was <laughs> maybe uh maybe a little too extreme we wanted to make the most extreme metal video ever and uh youtube has like age restricted it and kind of shadow banned <laughs> it and i'm not sure if it's because of like 
the drinking or the gore or the strippers or what we <laughs> it's what element of it got it it's the strippers yeah i don't know what actually element got it sort of um restricted on on yep. youtube but um it didn't uh they, they locked it down pretty quick so uh mission successful i guess <laughs> yeah i i don't think you can ever go too extreme with it and i absolutely love yeah. the video uh, oh, especially you. at the end like if anybody that hasn't seen the video i highly recommend watching it i'll probably leave a link to it in yeah the please um but just at the end when the janitor comes in right at the end and oh yeah sees the mess uh, absolutely yeah. comedy gold that yeah what that's our think? friend that's our friend dave and yeah. it's a bit of an easter egg he was in the the drone corpse aviator video as well cleaning up so uh, we, we were like it'd be funny if we had him back again cleaning up um uh, so almost could have him as like a recurring mascot yeah in every video I yeah, Man has yeah. Eddie and you guys can have Dave. Totally. We got Dave, <laughs> the janitor. Yeah. <laughs> what, yeah. What was the sort of craziest part about filming that video of, like on the actual day? Oh, I mean, filming all of our own deaths was really fun. Yep. I would say my, my, my favorite shot was um, Toby's. He was like eating his pasta and like every every dish got bigger and bigger and bigger and he did this look where he was eating his pasta and stuffing the the spaghetti in his mouth staring straight yep. into the camera and i think that was probably the funniest moment on set for everybody we were all just we were all dying as he was like kind of stuff in his face he he did a he did a great job there yeah. trying to look at everything because there's a lot packed into it's, it's a lot it's a yeah. lot and like you know it's i know i know the kind of the, the storyboard or this the, you know what the story is of the video and i'm like oh man it's like really rapid fire it's kind of hard to keep up yeah. here and i yeah. think that it it's a video that really fits the whole style of archspire's band because it feels like a lot of your stuff really is rapid fire you've obviously got the mm -hmm. insane technical wizardry uh, then you have the sort of more quiet introspective parts. Like if you look at the starter track, like Drain of Incarnation, for example, sure. it's got that whole sort of minute build mm -hmm. up to it. And then of course, uh, Ollie with his almost death rap vocals yeah. that are almost yeah. like a shotgun blast. How did that sort of style evolve over time? Like how did you come to, because you fit into a sort of unique niche in tech death where it is, there's a, a broad spectrum of stuff going on in all the songs. Yeah, I mean, Ollie is a big fan and, and Spencer as well, as well of um, like speed rap and tech nine. And so the vocal style sort of is heavily influenced by that. But also yep. like we're all, you know, we love death metal. So yep. um, can't just can't just rap. Um, so there's that element. And we all have this kind of love tech death and kind of the bringing of those two together, I think is really good. And as you learn to write music, um, you, you learn that you need space every now and then you need the the listener needs a place to sort of have like breathing room yep and um some of the clean sections are for that and they're also like written in for like our our own like bodies and yep. like our arms and like you can't just like blast for five minutes straight and then go straight into the next song it's like we need like we need a little bit of like breaks in the song so we we kind of write them for a couple of reasons one it's like it's good for the song structure and then also it's like you know you need you need that little we, bit of rest in there so you're on a little while, yeah. while playing <laughs> yeah yeah so. yeah i've seen sort of this trend in a lot of heavier music lately as well um if you look at a band sort of for example like white chapel that are starting to add clean vocals and yeah. things like that do you think that's a direction or is there any temptation to go down that no. route or are you no, like sticking I, to your guns i don't think we'll ever do that um it is you know something that like bands tend to do over time is yep. they they you know they for whatever reason and i you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna knock it it's it's not it's not my band but um they a lot of bands do tend to go towards clean singing after a while and it's probably to like reach a wider market maybe yep. or whatever or i it's just not it's not necessarily something that i any of us really in the band enjoy yep you know um so no Fair enough. Yeah, the <laughs> there's like i think the melody for us comes from the guitars or from the yeah. bass where like the melody is already there you know mm -hmm. and it doesn't we don't necessarily need the vocalist to to do yeah. that as well yeah. I, it boggles my mind sometimes how tech death can be so catchy as you guys mm -hmm. make it like like you said their melody is there and yeah. it's it's boppy in a way 
in yeah sure matters. like you can just go yeah cool that's actually a really catchy riff i didn't expect yeah that my tech yeah we want like you know if we if we leave jam and like the riff is stuck in my head the next day it's like oh yeah it's that's good that's a good part we would try to have that or something I mean, there's something for people to latch onto because if all the only people we played for were tech death fans we'd play for 15 people in ever in a total <laughs> Yeah, you know? and so you need to have something in there that people who aren't tech death fans can sort of latch onto, yeah. and it needs to be catchy. And you know, if you have that for people, then it's just going to be better music and more memorable music. Mm. I, I think you and guys I, have managed to sort of hit that sweet spot as well yeah. of uh, bringing tech death to a wider market. Yeah. Um, I feel definitely things like uh, Dean with his four levels of death metal videos yeah. on YouTube have. I think that was how I got introduced to the band originally. Yeah, I think his I think his YouTube channel has been, you know, a, a huge a huge thing for the for the band kind of behind the scenes that maybe we we don't yeah. don't necessarily factor in, but like there are lots of people at the shows who've never heard of us or never been to a metal show before, mm-hmm. and they're like, hey, D- Dean, I watch your channel. It's like, oh man, this is hmm. something to this. You know? Yeah, it feels like you guys really are leveraging social media and sort of all the different platforms available to get your stuff out there, and I think that's a way a lot of bands are going nowadays. Uh, was it a conscious yeah. thing to? like obviously with the Kickstarter, but to go down that route of making these crazy videos and sort of marketing yourselves in that way to reach a wider audience. Yeah. That's kind of where everything is at now. Yeah. You know, everything needs to be like viral and short and crazy and kind of TikTok, like instantly consumable. You know, we made, I don't know if you saw this video, but we made um, on April fools while we were on tour in Europe, we, we made a, a spoof video that we were going to like, we filmed it all with like, like a cell phone and just mm. made this really kind of crappy video and uh, said that was going to be the actual, this, this was what we I do remember saying this, actually, right. Yeah. And that stupid video actually, I think has way more views than the real bleed the future <laughs> video. Right. So it kind of shows you where, 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 where stuff is at, where it's like, you know, here's this stupid idea that we filmed with a cell phone. It costs us no money, but it's mm. really funny um will probably be more successful than like <laughs> yeah i, I think you it's, actually care about yeah i think it's like bringing your personality and having your personality show through that stuff that people sure. relate to yeah. more yeah and yeah 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 obviously that. it's resulted in things like the juno award that you guys won as well which i can imagine would have been a pretty big deal that was a really a really big deal you know i it's a, a pretty crazy platform for a, a band as extreme as us to be recognized at you know it's it's like the first time we went we were nominated we didn't win but like everybody in like canadian music which whatever small but it's like everybody in canadian music who are some some people are huge names they're there and it's like you just see them we're all having dinner together it's like this is a really crazy room to be in because you play because you yell at people (laughs) yeah Yeah. uh and then uh and then to win you know I, i i never really uh I never really expected a band as extreme as us to uh, to win. Mm. And uh, like you were nominated with some pretty good contemporaries. I know Spirit Box was there. Brand of Sacrifice was there as well. So I think it so, was yeah. a stacked sort of thing. And then to come out on top, I imagine that would have been a really, really good. Yeah, game. it was it was pretty crazy. It was pretty crazy for us. I, I don't think any of us really expected it. I think we looked at some of the other nominees and said, ah, it'll probably go to them for these reasons. And yeah. um Hey, I mean, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah, and it, it's it's uh, heartening to see sort of music like this being recognized on a wider scale. Yeah, you got, I gotta like it's it's really cool to see that the that the the Canadian awards, the Junos, are are like actually recognizing real metal bands, mm. um, and not like if you look at the Grammys, I mean, Foo Fighters will win Best Metal, and Tenacious D will win Best Metal. Because it's, I think it's like metal performance or something. It's not even like best metal album or whatever, whatever they call it. It's like yeah. branded in such a way that's like, oh, they covered Holy Diver, so <laughs> we're gonna give it to them. So it's cool in a, to see that it's like, I mean, Gore Guts was nominated, like real kind of underground, yeah, death metal bands get recognized at, uh, through this award system, and it's um, it's pretty great to see. Yeah, I think it definitely is, and I think it just shows that metal is starting to have the broader appeal across yeah. uh yeah. like just a wider audience and being more accepted nowadays which i think is i, I hope so thing. yeah yeah i mean you look, you look at what, like what lorna shore is has been able to do over the last couple of years yeah and it's like 
this could be you know good for everybody <laughs> yeah i i never thought that i was going to be a fan of death core and then will comes along with yeah screams, and i'm like okay i like this oh now. yeah this is actually pretty cool yeah <laughs> this tickles something it awakened something inside of me that i didn't know that i had yeah it's it feels like it's on like their their second wave of death core right now because i remember when it was like 2008 and everybody hated it you know yeah. everybody hated it and now there's kind of this, this like new wave of, of death core bands that are coming out and like it's got a lot of traction yeah know? it definitely has and i think every genre nowadays just is is blowing up in all the best ways and i'm so happy to see it because then you get all this diverse musicianship all these yeah different bands different flavors for everybody um yeah i think it's i think it's great yeah well um i don't want to keep you too long i understand you're probably a busy man um do you have anything else you want to say to the people before we go come to the show come hang out buy a t-shirt say hi yep you know i hope to see you all there yep and as i said the tour kicks off on october the 11th if you just search archfire australia there will be tickets and there will be a link in the description below jared it has been a pleasure thank you very so much, much. For coming on. i can't wait to see the show i'm super excited for it Hell yeah, man. See you there.